Well, I, I genuinely don't know what to say at this point. Let me tell you, I don't know what to say. You know, when Alabama loses to Oklahoma the way they did, 24 to 3, no offense, getting rattled by Oklahoma's defense. And I, I believe I said this last week, you know, Oklahoma's defense is not that bad, actually. It's actually a pretty good defense. I don't know if I said that, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, Oklahoma's defense is actually pretty good. It's just their offense is very inconsistent. And that definitely proved itself against Alabama. But, again, the defense made the plays needed to stymie the Crimson Tide and give them their third loss. Texas A&M had to go to four overtimes with Auburn. And you know how that ended with A&M losing because that's just how A&M does. Um, honestly, you know, A&M had this in the bag. They, they really had this in the bag at one point. I mean, you know, you had the opportunity to, you know, get a big victory and you just couldn't make the plays needed in the overtime with the two-point conversion offs, you know, didn't make the plays in, in, you know, really in regulation anyway. But, I mean, Auburn, you know, being Auburn, you know, having to kind of kind of piss away a 21-point lead, you know. Yeah, because, again, Auburn's not very good. So, you know, but the Auburn was able to get the win. They won. Ole Miss, I, I don't even understand it at this point. You, this, this is probably the biggest shock to me. You know, you you are one of those teams that, you know, have all the marbles on the table here. You have the opportunity. You are one of those teams that in the past couple of years have squandered their chances to get to the four-team playoff, and you squander your chance against a Florida team that's fighting just for bowl eligibility. Yeah, DJ Lagway is good. Yeah, that Florida defense can can be really good, but at the same time, you know, Florida's more motivated at this point. They're, they were way more motivated than Ole Miss was. I mean, Dark throwing picks everywhere. I mean, the offense can't do anything. I mean, this is typical Lane Kiffin, you know, going forward on fourth one multiple times, one of those times being having Jackson Dart as a lead blocker from the Wildcat. I, I need to stress that. Jackson Dart as a lead blocker from the Wildcat formation on fourth and one when you could look at the points. But again, th th that's, that's just college coaching in a nutshell right there. That's just the ball hit the decisions we see sometimes, you know. So now we have multiple SEC teams with three losses. How does that factor into the playoff? Well, Alabama, AM, Ole Miss, and South Carolina, yes, a lot of people are clamoring for South Carolina to get into this thing, to get to the party as a three-loss team. But again, South Carolina has lost the Bama, lost the Ole Miss. You know, they don't have a good win on their resume. And again, this is the same argument. Yeah, yeah let's talk about the SCS real quick. You know, this is the same argument, you know, that a lot of people are going to use, uh, you know, at least – Put people who watch college football on a regular basis know this that the FCS playoffs are also inherently biased towards you know bigger conferences, you know the Big Sky, the CAA, and the Missouri Valley. This year, you know the Big South OVC, you know, has kind of gotten a little bit more favor. The the, uh, the UAC, the United Athletic, the A Sun WAC thing has gotten a little bit more of that, you know you know, turbulence towards them this year. But it's usually the big sky, the CAA, or the MVFC that usually is like, those are the top three. And it's the same thing here. A lot of people are clamoring for more SEC teams, despite the fact, you know, or just crying about the fact that there may could be, you know, you know less SEC teams. I think there's going to be less SEC teams in the playoff. That's what I'm personally thinking. I actually think we're going to have even less SEC teams. I think we're going to have two. You know, I think we're going to have two. I just don't see a three-loss team making it. I really don't. So, honestly, where Alabama is, they're ranked 13th as of tonight. Where they are, the Iron Bowl doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to watch it. Not gonna waste my time on it. Um, again, a lot of people are like, "Well, can Alabama still make it?" I don't know. I don't think so. Again, a lot of the chips, you know, for the South Carolina Clemson game, which you know Clemson has been, you know, you know they've been kind of moving along. You know, they 
played all their ACC games, the seven and one. They're waiting for Miami to slip up. They're waiting for Miami to slip up. And we'll talk about Miami in a moment, but you know, Clemson has the opportunity to do the funniest thing and get themselves in position to be in position. You know, that's one team that has a lot riding on this week. Um, South Carolina, again, I think three losses does you win at this point. Three losses, you know, does you win. I'm sorry. It, it just is what it is. You know, you have to have a, you have to have a good amount of wins, and I just don't think South Carolina has them. Neither does Alabama. Yes, Alabama has the resume, but, again, that resume arguments, again, let's go back to the FCS real quick. The FCS playoffs, you know, the bracket was revealed, and, you know, a lot of people were up in arms, you know, about – the, the two through five seats, was it was it going to be, you know, South Dakota or North Dakota State or South Dakota State? You know, who was going to be two? And, you know, a lot of people got mad. It was going to be North Dakota State. You know, and North Dakota State got number two to do their resume and everything like that. It's like the fact they lost to the fourth seed in, in South Dakota, you know. You know, but, I mean, again, it's all, it's all going to be about numbers and stuff like that going forward, really, and I just don't think that the SEC teams that have three losses have the numbers, you know, at this point. They don't have the wins, you know. Indiana, a lot of people were worried about Indiana, you know. They did not look very competitive against Ohio State. I'm just going to be real with you. But at the same time, you know, Indiana has 10 wins, best season by far, yeah, they didn't even come close to beating Ohio State. In fact, Curtis Work was hurt. But, I mean, you know, when the Ohio State offense is just hitting, it just hits. And, again, it proves as to why Ohio State can't actually be a top two team in the country. You know. But at the same time, you know, a lot of people worried, well, well, Indiana might fall out of the top, you know, top 12. And then, you know, because they don't have to strike the schedule and yada, yada, yada. Again, you know, it's not just about strength of schedule. It's about, you know, the number of wins you have. And, again, 10 wins is way more than eight last I checked. You know, it's – it's Indiana should safely be in if they continue to take care of business this weekend. Same with Penn State. They can beat Maryland this, win, this weekend. You know, that should do it for them. Notre Dame, same thing. If they take care of business against USC – they were in the number five in the country. Oregon, they're playing Washington. Take care of business. You're in regardless. I mean, you can either be the one seed or the five seed by December the eighth. You can either be the one or the five. Oregon, take your pick. You want to win the Big Ten championship or you don't want to win it. Either or. I think Oregon wants to win the Big Ten championship, though. That would be crazy. But yeah, so. What else? The Big 12. Yes. Yes. The Big 12. Let's talk about that because Kansas was able to beat Colorado. That's the third straight ranked team that Kansas has beaten, and they are going for another one. You know, well, actually, no, they're not going for another one next week, but they are trying to get the bowl eligibility. And that would be crazy if that momentum, they beat Colorado. Yes. You know, things did not go Colorado's way, but they're still in business for the Big 12 championship. Same thing with BYU. They got beat by Arizona State. There was some wonky ref ball at the end there to where it was like one second on the clock when it probably shouldn't have been. And, you know, just crazy shenanigans at the end of that game in which BYU was able to try and come back, but they couldn't come back all the way. And, you know, that kind of did them in. Kansas State had to beat Utah in a tough game. You know, Iowa State, same thing. They had – well, actually, no, Iowa State beat Utah. Kansas State, I think Kansas State was off this week, I think, question mark. I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the, the Big 12 race really comes down to Arizona State, who is now number 16 in the nation. Kansas State, number 24, number 25 in Colorado. And the number 18 team in the country, Iowa State. The Farmageddon, it's probably, you know, one of those games that's going to matter. Colorado, Oklahoma State on Black Friday, which we'll talk about, you know, a little bit more in a second. But BYU will play Houston late at night. Um, and, yeah, Arizona State plays Arizona, you know, in the afternoon on Saturday. So I don't know, man. I don't know. The Big 12 has, like, 
900 different possibilities to where, you know, teams that you didn't think would be in this title race or in this title race like Texas Tech or Baylor. But ultimately, it's really going to come down to those four games I just listed off in Houston BYU, although Houston BYU is the is the late game at night. So it may not even matter by then, but definitely Farmageddon. Uh, the Arizona's the Arizona's battling and Colorado Oklahoma State. Although Colorado Colorado Oklahoma State has more significance to the Heisman race than anything else. Colorado's kind of mathematically, you know, just kind of they they need a lot of help to get into the Big Twelve title. It's really you know it's really going to be either Arizona State or Iowa State, maybe Kansas State or BYU, and maybe Colorado too. It's it's again it's a conundrum. I don't know what in the world's going to happen this week. You know, the, just watch those Big 12 games. They are very key, and also they can definitely help who's going to be that, you know, that 12 seed right now because the only other team that really, aside from maybe a South Carolina sneaking in, you know, or Clemson, you know, is is the Tulane Green Wave, yes. The American, the presumptive American champ, because Army lost to Notre Dame again. Can Tulane get the momentum they need? They have to beat Memphis on Thanksgiving. This is a key game now. You have to watch this game on Thanksgiving. So I'd maybe you know paired it up with that Green Bay Miami game on Thanksgiving. Watch that goodness. And you know Tulane is in position to be in position to rank number seventeen in the country. That is not definitely eliminate you. We can because. Tulane has more than one game left. Other teams like Alabama, Ole Miss, you know, South Carolina, this is it for them. But Tulane has one more game on their resume to kind of get themselves in position to be in position. Army, if things go a little bit chaotic, I think Army will be back in the rankings, you know, this next upcoming week. Um, so, yeah. Tulane also controls its destiny in a way. You know, they need some help, but they control a lot of things because there's a lot of three lost teams. You know, there's a lot of three lost teams, a lot of two lost teams that just don't have the resume either. But Tulane, you know, they can tout they are a conference champion. And what I really want is six conference champions in the college football playoff. That's what I really want, you know, because that's what we're supposed to get in the first place. We're supposed to get the six plus six model. I don't, I don't, I don't care if it was going to be. You know, I don't care what the CFP and the NCAA, you know, guys were trying to do. Well, not the NCAA, but the college commissioners. And I, I, I'm messing up my words. But you know what I mean. You know, these these coaches and these administrators of these colleges and, and, and you know, trying to get themselves, you know, being a little bit more greedy. You know, these college conference commissioners trying to be a little bit more greedy. So, yeah, Tulane is in position to be in position. They just got to beat Memphis and then Army. And then that would get them the AAC championship, and that would get them in pretty good position. Would they be like the first team out or maybe number 12? Who knows? Again, a lot of people want Boise to trip up, but they play Oregon State. And this is really where the crux of my discussion of this final portion of this video is going to be about. The highest been trophy race, you know, yeah, there's Cam Ward. Yeah, there's Dylan Gabriel. But those two guys don't really matter in the, in the grand scheme of things because, you know, they both had some really eh games lately, you know, where they just haven't really done too much, to be quite honest with you. It comes down to, you know, the two favorites. Travis Hunter, the all-around two-way player sensation who really has just kind of had some okay-ish stats, to be quite honest with you. Definitely some good stats, I'll say that. But it's been kind of okay. And then Ashton Genty, the monster running back, who's who even got who's been hurt for multiple weeks with the same arm injury, but he's been continuing to play on, getting multiple touchdowns each and every week, getting over 120 yards each and every week. It's going to come down to this. Again, Oregon State trying to be bowl eligible. They want to beat Boise State. Boise State just trying to figure out, hey, who are we going to play, you know, in the Mountain West Championship on our home field on Friday, December the 6th? Who are we going to play? Are we going to play UNLV, who's ranked, or Colorado State, who's unbeaten in conference play? Are we going to – who are we going to play? Colorado in 
They have Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State hasn't been very good this season at all. I think they're still winless in conference play, I think. Well, they have one win, but who cares? It's Oklahoma State. They're bad. So <laughs> I think things this week, you know, this the, the Thursday night game is going to be intriguing again. Thanksgiving, you know, hope you all are going to have a good Thanksgiving. I'm, 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 I'm pretty excited for Thanksgiving. This year, gonna whip up something. I'm gonna whip up something real good uh, in the kitchen for Thanksgiving, or at least try to, anyway. Friday, of course, you have you know the Black Friday games involving the Heisman Trophy race. Georgia, Georgia Tech is also one of those. If Georgia has a third loss, you know, which actually can happen because Georgia Tech is no slouch. Just by the way, because I haven't forgotten about Georgia. Don't forget about Vanderbilt either. They're also no slouch. So if anybody else catches a third loss, you know, for the SEC, either Georgia or Tennessee, or even a fourth loss in the case of like Alabama or Ole Miss, you know, they're definitely out at this point. Like you just. I just can't see a three-loss SEC champion, you know, in the top 12. I just can't see it. I just can't see a three-loss team in this playoff. You know, if it were 24 teams, you know, like the FCS, then definitely, absolutely, absolutely we could see, you know, some of these teams, you know, get in. But I just don't see it. Um, and then Saturday, again, loaded slash Saturday slate, the final real Saturday of the season before conference champion. Well, it is the final Saturday of the season before conference championships. It's the final Saturday, college football. You know, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be fun because again, we don't know what the Big Twelve will look like. We don't know who's gonna come out of there. The SEC comes down to either Texas or Texas A and M. My horns. It's the Aggies in the Lone Star Showdown for the first time in 13 years. Going to be game day. Going to be where game day goes. Going to be the biggest game of the weekend by far. Michigan trying to beat Ohio State, you know, along with other, you know, Big Ten rivals, you know, like Washington and Oregon facing off and, and Indiana, Purdue. I don't want to say Maryland, Penn State is a rivalry because Penn State really doesn't have any rivals. But it is what it is. Um, again, the Iron Bowl could be significant. The Egg Bowl could be significant. You know, just for the sake of completely eliminating, you know, these three lost teams, which they should be eliminated already. But you know, people are going to be inherently biased. But I, I personally think these three lost teams are done. You know, um, again, the ACC. It's going to come down to the Palmetto Bowl. Miami, Syracuse. Cam Ward has been struggling lately. Syracuse can throw the ball. SMU just trying to get another win, you know, against Cal, you know, and keep themselves, you know, occupied, you know, because they're number nine in the nation. SMU is and Miami's what number six. Yeah. So it it should be fun. It really it really is going to be a fun weekend of college football. I can't wait. I really can't. You know. I mean, at least Oregon State's packed two champions. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, hey, a lot of teams are also still fighting for bowl eligibility. We still don't have enough bowl eligible teams as of yet, but maybe we will by the end of the weekend. I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, I'm going to get back to you all tomorrow, talk the NFL before, you know, I finally get everything I need for a great Thanksgiving meal, you know. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to get on out y'all's hair. I know I was going to talk Feast Week, but I'm going to probably talk about it on Saturday, maybe Friday night. I don't know. Probably Saturday morning is when I'm going to talk about, you know, Feast Week being what it was because I'm trying to enjoy the rest of this week off because I need it. I need the rest. So, and I hope you all are getting the rest that you need as well because, again, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. It's just a couple days away, so. Yeah, I'm going to get on that show's here, and I want to thank you all for, you know, for 300 subscribers. There's 300 of you that, you know, also are watching this channel. I don't know why you're still here, but, hey, I'm glad you're still here, and I hope we continue to grow, you know, with everything that I do for you. And, yeah, I'm going to get on that show's here. Good night.